Hello everyone. This is the second part of our logarithmic decrement example. We're going to solve the same problem as we did in the previous video, but we're going to use a different method. So remember that last time the first step was to calculate the logarithmic decrement and then we found the damping ratio. Um, in, this in this new method, we're going to start off the same way but the way that we're going to find the natural frequency is a little bit different. So let's start by calculating the logarithmic decrement again. Again, it's equal to the natural log of the ith position divided by the position one period later and that was equal to again 0 0.01 divided by in this case it's 0 And that was equal to 0 0.6931. After that, we wanted to get the damping ratio. As a function of the logarithmic decrement. And that was equal to 0 0.1096. Now this method starts to be different in the way that we're going to um, calculate the natural frequency. The way that we're going to do this is by noting that uh, the equation of the lines that join all the peaks and valleys of our position graph has the following form. Since we have one unknown here that is pretty easy to find, we're going to start by doing that. We're going to call it the amplitude. of the envelope so we're going to calculate y at time equals 0 is equal to 0 0.01 is equal to a times e to the minus damping ratio natural frequency times 0, which leads us to A is equal to 0 All right, so I rewrote the equation here, but I forgot to include the value that we have for the damping ratio. So let me do that. Now, if we have another point a point other than uh, when time equals zero, which we do, uh, we can calculate the value of the natural frequency. So we're going to do that. So 
So let's pick the second point at um, time equals 0 0.06 seconds. It's equal to 0 0.005. which in turn is equal to 0 0.01 e to the minus 0 0.1096 times the natural frequency times 0 0.06 seconds. All right, so we're going to play around with this equation to solve for the natural frequency. Let's start by dividing 0 0.001. So we have 0 0.005. Next, we're going to take the natural log. And on the right-hand side, we're going to be left with only the exponent. And so the natural frequency is equal to Unsurprisingly, we found the same result as we found before, which is 105 point, let me just make sure, 105.5. The reason I had to look is that uh, the way that I calculated calculated it myself, I wasn't uh, rounding any answers. So just to make sure that it's consistent with what we had before, I wanted to write down the same uh, answer. Uh, the units are radians per second. All right. From there. We can get the natural frequent, uh, the sorry, the stiffness, we said that the stiffness comes from the natural frequency, which is equal to the square root of the stiffness over the mass. It's equal to 20 times 105. Point three five four five squared. So K the stiffness is equal to um, it's two point two one nine nine times 10 to the 5 newtons per meter. We're going to highlight this answer in a different color. And finally, the second part of the answer is to find the damping coefficient.
we said that the damping ratio was equal to the damping coefficient divided by 2 times the mass times the natural frequency. And so the damping coefficient is equal to 2 times 20 times 105.3545. times 0 0.1096 and so we get that the damping coefficient is equal to 462. Yeah, approximately 462 you can try it out the numbers do work out 462 newtons second meter And we're done. So if you want to have this worksheet as a PDF, I've put a link in the description below. And thank you for watching.